multiple PBA titles on the line in Detroit as we welcome you to night three of the 10th edition of the sport's ultimate test, the PBA World Series of Bowling. They've gathered from around the globe to comprise the best of the PBA. Tonight, we fear the fro. Kyle Troop looks to pick his way to another title. Also in the house, the real deal, Bill O'Neill, as he seeks his second crown of 2019. Yeah! The World Series of Bowling shifts yeah! into high gear next. Welcome to night three from the Motor City, the D, and it's another sellout here at the legendary Thunderbolt Lanes in Allen Park, Michigan. Last night, we witnessed a wild title match in the Chameleon Championship. The world's top player, Jason Belmonte, snuck through the semis in the final. He got a huge break when top seed Andres Gomez missed the single pin spare. Belmo steps up, strikes, claims his 20th PBA title and second of yes. this stellar campaign for him. So Monday, yes. it was Dick Allen winning his second crown of 2019. Belmo followed suit last night. Bill O'Neill could do the same tonight. Tomorrow night in primetime, Jason Belmonte, your one seed, goes for his record 11th PBA major title. Friday, we feature the USA versus the world. Belmo was in position to make tonight's show as well. Noon Eastern, he was in the top spot after qualifying for the Scorpion Championship, but was uncharacteristically off, swept in the round of 16 by that man, B.J. Moore. More advances to his first TV show. Chris Prather's in the show, as is Bill O'Neill, the vet of the group. But all eyes are going to be on the outstanding quaff and matching game <laughs> of Kyle Troop. Thrilled you're with us tonight, Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson with you. Well, if Jason Belmonte is the current poster boy for PBA, Kyle Troop is option 1A. A couple weeks ago, TMZ absolutely fell in love with him. They weren't alone. And what's not to love about Kyle Troop? Outgoing personality, the afro, the outfit. Well, he has brought so many eyeballs to the PBA as of late. He really has. You know, Rob, funny story. I'm getting my haircut in Orlando back home, and my barber says, hey, I was watching TV the other night, and I stopped on bowling. Who's the guy with the hair? That's what Kyle Troop has done for the sport. But, you know, he's a lot more than just flashy clothes and nice hair. This guy can actually bowl. Three titles to his credit. This is his third telecast of the season. He's on the road to the natural progression, Rob. And what I mean by that is he's getting better and better each and every week out here. But the big question mark for me tonight is whether or not his injury will hold up. He's got a strained tendon in his ring finger. It's going to be interesting to see if it bothers him tonight. Well, it bothered him earlier today. He told us he picked up a piece of luggage, got a stinger, had to drop the luggage immediately. For more on that, Kimberly Pressler standing by with Kyle Troop. Thanks, guys. So, Kyle, we missed you the past few weeks because uh, you took some time off because of your hand and your injury. So uh, tell us what's going on with it right now. Uh, I mean, it, it's improved a little bit. Uh, I've still got some issues with my ring finger, uh, but luckily I've kind of changed my game up just a little bit to make up for my ring finger hurting, or, you know, whatever it is. So uh, we're gonna deal with it. You know, we got to the show with a hurt finger, so I think we can manage through the show. Well, you bowled 36 matches to get here. You got a few more left in you tonight? Uh, we've got at least three or four games left in me. All right, well, good luck to you. Guys, we're gonna send it back to you. Thank you. So here's our format for the PBA Scorpion Championship. Field of 134 down to four. The round of 16 and round of eight held this afternoon. And we are now down to our final four. BJ Moore took care of Larson, 3-1. Billy O took care of EJ Tackett. I'm gonna have highlights from the round yeah, of eight. That was a great match. Some exciting stuff that went down. Troop took care of Maldonado. Prather swept Simonson. There's a look at your stepladder format. The seeds are wiped out. The winner of match one, the high score immediately goes up to the one seed in the championship. Second highest score is your number two seed. And then the final two will meet in match number two. Let's take a look at the scorpion oil pattern. It's the longest of the three animal patterns that we use here at the World Series. The players are gonna start Pretty straight between second and third arrow. But as this anthropod pattern breaks down, the players are gonna migrate in. The players that can stay in front of the transition will have the best results. I'm sorry, what pattern? Anthropod. Anthropod. Yeah. 
Scorpion sounds sexier. I think that's why they made the decision to go with Scorpion over Anthropod. Right. Right. Uh, I agree. But I, you know, some you know some viewers watching they may like the more scientific right. Scorpion. I so that's why I went with Anthropod on I the backside. I had to look it up. I didn't know what you were talking about. The low kneel. <laughs> it's all ten to go in the opening frame of this four-man match. If you've missed the last two nights. It is rapid fire bowling. Yeah. No time to breathe. Kyle Troop steps right on up. Yeah, I'm just going to try to keep you informed as to who's leading. I think all four players are going to play this pattern fairly similar to one another, Rob, which may bode well, may turn this pattern into high score, in, into a high scoring event tonight. DJ Moore, his first televised appearance of the season. He's gonna be on tomorrow night's show as well, vying for a major. Can you shoot that? I'm waiting on my spare ball. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's my first time. <sighs> I think, oh, yeah, I think he, could, he left the spare I, ball in the back. I think he left it in the locker room. I mean, that's confidence. Walking into a tournament, I don't need a spare ball. Yeah, that's just that's Jason Belmonte. That, that, that nice spare there by BJ Moore, make, making it 210. <laughs> Your hammer tough spare replay and a big one from BJ. Well done to avoid the open frame as Kyle Troop. That's not a spare ball. Afro Frisch goes after the 10 pin, misses it, misses the spare ball. I didn't want to wait no longer. He didn't want to wait any Tomorrow longer, so he did, He tried to throw his strike ball at it. Interesting that he, his spare ball wasn't down there, which means he didn't shoot any spares during warmups. I give him credit for being courteous and not delaying everybody else. But yeah. That may come back to bite him here in the position round. <laughs> Heavy there was Prather. Strike ball in hand. <laughs> this is not the start Kyle Troop. Envisions. And not waiting for that spare ball. He's in jeopardy of going back to back open frames here at the start. Again, he will not be eliminated though. Nice cover for Prather. This is just a positioning round to find out seeds one, two, three, and four. Just like BJ Moore did, get it over here, throw the two into the 10. The ball will take out the four pin. Back to back open frames for Troop. He's usually full of good vibes, good cheer, great energy. A little deflated right now, the way these opening frames have gone. Yeah, kind of a, a auspicious start, don't you think? I mean, just work my spare ball, it's not even here. Very strange. Did, is there somebody who's in charge of bringing the spare ball to Yeah, the player. The player, right? Yeah. Like, you're, you're in charge of your equipment. Like, if you need something else, right. you ask a ball rep to go to the locker room or, hey, I, I think I have this one magic ball that'll work, but it's not here, it's in the locker room. But you put your arsenal together and bring it down right. to, the, to the championship pair. O'Neal trying to become the fourth this season to win multiple titles. His good buddy Jason Belmonte did it last night. Whoa. Was that one. Safe. Yep. It's not how, it's how many. It's a little thin, but the 3 6 10 is converted by O'Neill. Prather converts that one. You see Troop right now in last place. BJ Moore stepping up. You notice three out of the four players uh, have decided to to don purple jerseys. I did, Troop did not get the purple memo. He did not. Also didn't get the memo to bring a spare ball. Hello, messenger. Yeah, get in the pit.
B.J. Moore, the guy that eliminated Jason Belmonte, who was the number one seed, he shut out Belmo three zip in the round of 16. Strike seven spare. And now it'll try to be a nine spare for Billy O here in the third. Troop needs something positive from his game. Looks like he's gone with a different orb. Definitely a different orb. Ball change goes through the nose, but this time it's just the 3 6. That one, 14th year on the tour. He clearly is the most experienced of the four finalists tonight. Without question. 10 titles in a major. 3-6 for Troop. Gets his first mark. The road to recovery. I really love this game here. BJ Moore, watch how effortless this power is. He's the five seed tomorrow night at the World Championship. Boom, Shakalaka. Mm -hmm. There's a double for B.J. Moore. Another player that's quietly making a lot of noise, if you will, out here on tour is Chris Prather. Fifth year pro, 27 years old, now. looking for his first tour title. My turn. Sam, he has four third place finishes and seven shows leading up to this event in two years. There you go, Kyle. And the smile is back. Remember, nobody's eliminated after this game. This is just for seeding. High game is your number one seed, and so on down the line. Right now, Bill O'Neill is in second place. You know, it's really nice to see Bill O'Neill bowling well again. And, you know, he struggled for a few years. Last year, he was the perennial runner-up, where he finished six just about every other week, and then came away with the first win of the season, our new season on Fox. And it was nice to see Billy get that win. In Arlington, Texas. Yep. Also made the double show a couple weeks after that with his buddy Jason Belmonte. Well, they always make the double show, though. <laughs> you heard about my idea for the double show. Yeah, Next I like season. it. I, did, I, I like did too. it. I, I, I need to see... I need to see PBA and Fox follow through on my idea. Beautiful game. BJ Moore, he's got more time to bowl now. Yeah, he's had a lot going on in his yes, he has. Has, hasn't he? I mean, he's got, A, he's got Irish twins. Yeah. That, that kind of usually ends the conversation. Right. You got a lot going on? Yeah, I got Irish twins. Okay, you win. Yeah. You know, and then he relocated. Yeah, there's a lot more to the story right. we'll get into when, uh, when we see him in his match. I'll let you handle that. Thank you. It's a couple paragraphs. Here's Troop down 42. Remember, back to back opening frames. <laughs> Got a late hammer of the 10 pin to avoid 7 10, which probably would have visually summed things up on how this opening match has gone so far for him. O'Neill down 21. They're all chasing BJ Moore. Single pin conversion taken care of by Troop. Again, still feeling the effects of those opening open frames. Here's your leader, BJ Moore. 30 years old, ninth year on the tour, zero tour titles. Trying to change that either tonight or tomorrow night. Oh, my. What was that? I don't know. Did somebody throw that from the back of the pit? That wasn't a messenger. 
That was a FedEx delivery from somewhere else. <laughs> Do we have surveillance video in the back? I don't know, but that was nasty. What's amazing to me with the, the young players and all the power now is the longer the oil pattern gets, the farther left the players start. You know, back in our day, my, Mike Edwards, our statistician standing right next to me, back in our day, when we bowled on a really long pattern, you see the wicked pin action there for B.J. Moore. We would start farther right and go straighter from out. And now the players move way in immediately, open up the front part of the lane, and that's how they create hold. B.J. Moore, your leader as things stand right now. He's almost halfway to being your one seed here at the Scorpion Championship. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling for promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you. Log on to GoBowling.com. Beautiful look at the spirit of Detroit, the large bronze monument at the Coleman A. Young Municipal Center. You remember when the Red Wings won the Stanley Cup in 97? The spirit of Detroit absolutely donned the jersey of the Red Wings. Time now for your Flow Bowling Tournament highlights. Round of eight action from earlier in the day. Sean Maldonado taking on Kyle Troop. The Candyman having a real nice week, but he would fall to Kyle Troop. Kyle wins three to one and advances to the televised finals. What a nice season so far for Anthony Simonson. Couldn't make the show though, falling eventually three to zero to Chris Prather. Yeah, the players champion Simonson decided to play the extreme outside part of the lane in this match while everybody else was playing in. Interesting concept, interesting strategy, but it didn't work. Thomas Larson, good showing today, left the seven there. BJ Moore though, he was dialed in. All that effortless power from BJ Moore proved to be too much for Thomas Larson. B.J. Moore wins that match 3-1. Game five between Bill O'Neill and E.J. Tackett, Randy, came down to the 10th frame. Yeah, E.J. Tackett steps up in the 10th. He needs a double to make the telecast. Throws a great shot here, first ball in the 10th. Almost leaves a pocket 7-10. Just the seven stands. E.J.'s done. Bill O'Neill moves on. He wins 3-2. Take a look at other finishers right now. Jacob Buttroff, who's on tomorrow night's telecast. Came in 10th mm -hmm. place. Kurt Pilon, nice week. Norman, Norman. Yeah, there he is again. That guy. Wait, how old is he? Yeah, I think he's like 65 now, isn't he? Oh. Actually, he's ageless. Oh, yeah, the troop heads are out tonight in the D. Supporting that man, Kyle Troop. Would have been nice if one of those guys could have brought his spare ball with him. Again? Wow. <laughs> You are beating that to death. Well, I'm worried because it's going to hey. bite him. It already has bitten it, him. It has. Yeah, you're right. Look out. You can always tell by the body language whether or not the players like it, right, Rob? That, that body language was screaming at you and yeah, I. Yeah, that was screaming. Nope, not good. Yeah, lucky to get that 10 pin to fall late. Exactly. Love that smile, though, in the background. Billy O'Neill up front, though, is all business. Down 21 in second place. Really nice oh, shot there by Billy. Come on. Yeah. You, you only hear a player say that when they've aced the shot, they mm -hmm. don't strike. There you go, Kyle. Yeah, he needs to get some of that positive mojo back inside yeah. his system, doesn't yeah. he? And once it hits, he'll be in good shape. And remember, he is not eliminated. Nobody's eliminated after match one. This is purely a chaotic positioning round. O'Neill drops the 10 pin. Prather one and three on television and singles appearances. Finished in fourth place in Jonesboro this year. Still looking for his first strike. Amazing. Yeah. This guy's really good. Hasn't struck yet in six frames. Tricky oil pattern, Rob. Too far to the right, it hangs. You get it going up the lane at all, and there's not enough oil in the middle of the lane to hold the ball on line. Moore working on a four batter, looking to make it five in a row, and he does. That's just filthy.
Prather is right up and ready to roll, isn't he? It's not that ball. How about B.J. Moore and Kyle Troop, both with fairly similar rev rates. Kyle doesn't use his thumb, B.J. does. That's how much power B.J. Moore has. Come on. Remember Troop dealing with that ring finger injury yep. on his right hand. Forced him out of a couple competitions. Yeah, he had to miss a couple of weeks. Yeah, now that, that's just stupid. Even put a smile on B.J. Moore's face. O'Neal down 33. Looking to finish this one off in the seventh. Right between the eyes. Talking to Prather just a few hours ago, talking about this season, started sketchy, a couple top 20s, but didn't think he was feeling it. Didn't think he was throwing it well, and I think he had the same sentiment in the early stages of this one until right now, finally getting his first strike there in the seventh. And a ball change will do that to you sometimes. Nice pickup on that ball change, Rob. I love it. Yeah, it's because you mouthed to me, <laughs> ball change. No, I didn't. <laughs> you did. More. Hey, Randy. Yeah. Put the six pack back in the fridge. We're not going to crack it open. Okay. She's a little quick. 2 8 10. The ball comes in light, and you heard why. He threw it too fast. We saw the speed playing a factor last night. Yeah. Jason Belmonte was too fast. Had enough time, though, to pull down the MPH. Made the adjustment and won yeah. to a title number 20. Well, you know, we've talked about ball speed pretty much the entire season. One of the reasons why Bill O'Neill has done so well and why he's uh, in the winner's circle once again and back in position, it's because he's worked on throwing the ball slower. Last night we saw Jason Belmonte when he got too fast in the, in the high 20s that his ball would go light. As soon as he was in the 19s, it faced the pocket correctly. Even more important on this longer oil pattern. Troop, more open frames than strikes here in our position match. And now he levels things up at twos. There you go, kid. That's like the third different bowling ball he's tried, which makes great sense because he knows his position. He's trying to get locked in for the opening match, which right now looks like he'll be a part of. More right now looks like he's going to be part of our championship match with throws like that. Yeah. He's got one runner-up finish to his credit. And right now, it looks like B.J. Moore is getting that much closer to locking up the number one spot. Max score for B.J., 255. That one didn't hit very hard. That left lane, it look, almost looks like there's a puddle of oil in front of the head pit. The ball starts to, to curve or hook into the pocket, and then all of a sudden it just quits. <laughs> Mr. Troop starting to figure things out now. You know, if you go back and look at the score, you see the scoreboard right there, you see how three of the players struck and Prather didn't. You know what we call that? Well, that's a beer frame. So Prather would have to buy. That's the beauty of these four man matches. It's the league lingo. No, I know, yeah. I know, but I think yeah. we should incorporate it. Yeah. Jason Couch taught me how to, oh, how Jason, to, get, Jason how to get involved. Jason, Jason, doing on that one, huh? Yeah. Jason's, Jason's <laughs> amping up and getting ready for the senior tour. He's too young for the senior tour. No, he's not. No, in my book, he's too young. He's old, like no, me. No, 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 no. The first time I think I dealt with Jason Couch. North Carolina. Who was his teammate at the Chris Paul 
celebrity. LeBron James. Remember that? Yes. How much fun was that? That was incredible. Yeah, Jason and actually. And they won it. They won it. 248, 77.2% of the time it's made every time. Billy O'Neill keeping it tight with BJ Moore here. Throwing it straight. Love it. Wow. Was it last night or the night before we talked about the bucket conversion? Remember the gentleman, Dennis, I think his name was, yep. sent in the, the video? Well, that's the bucket without the five pin. And Bill O'Neill just showed you how to shoot that by throwing it straight and hard with a spare ball. Moore, your leader right now, can max it up with a 2-5-5. Strike here, he's almost locked himself in the number one spot. Instead, he leaves himself with one of the toughest spares you can shoot at. That's not a washout or a split out here on tour. Three, six, nine, ten. O'Neill with an opportunity here. Doesn't like it. But it ends up at a perfect spot. They'll take the result. Starts the tenth with the strike. Some players like to throw it straight and hard right here at the three and drive it back into the nine pin. We'll see if BJ throws it straight or if he curves it. Great spare. O'Neill acknowledged that as well. All right, O'Neill, max score 217. B.J. Moore's in the 220s with a mark. So it's all on B.J. Moore. He marks in the 10th, nobody can catch him. This is all about second seed now. Sixth strike for O'Neill. A little better. A little better. I think for a while now, Kyle Troop knew he was going to be in our second match. And the focus quickly became, oh, let's, just, let's find the right ball, let's find the right speed, and let's get our confidence back. And it looks like that is the way it is going to end here in our opening match for Troop. And right now, Bill O'Neill needs seven to lock up the number two seed. He, he, that's absolutely right. Yeah. And that's assuming if B.J. Moore doesn't mark. Now, B.J. Moore needs a mark for the number one seed. If he doesn't mark, Bill O'Neill will be your number one seed. Marshall Holman in attendance there. You see him over the right shoulder of B.J. Moore. The Sit. manager for Team USA Friday night yeah. with USA versus the world. Sitting next to the president uh, to his right, president of the storm, Bill Christman. The center dropped into the pit before he could curl his way to the 10. Just to the left, Randy Schickert, president of EBI. Got all the big leagues here. Yeah, well, it's the World Series of Bowling. Why wouldn't you be there? That was a, that was a, a strike ball test. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Prather, just his third strike here in the Not position match. Much, but, yeah, whatever. There's your winner, B.J. Moore. He'll be your top seed.
What an opportunity for DJ to win his first tour title. Wife and kids yep. in attendance as well. I ain't got nothing else. Remember, he's never all. won before out here. In that game, we threw them all. He's got one game waiting in the wings. Most enviable position you could ever have in a stepladder finals on the PBA Tour. Lots of power, lots of action coming your way. Stay with us. We welcome you back to Detroit, our continuing live coverage of the PBA Scorpion Championship. DJ Moore, your one seed with the 224. Bill O'Neill comes in second. Troop and Prather will meet in your next match. Now you can see that the players are pretty much all on top of each other at the arrows, Rob. 21, 20, 21, 20. Break point just about identical. So all four players playing this Scorpion oil pattern, pretty much the same. Time now for your PBA playoff points list presented by our good friends at Volvo. Follow no one. We're gonna show you the top 30. Remember, it's the top 24 after the USBC Masters that qualify for the PBA playoffs. The USBC Masters live coverage on FS1 April 1st from Las Vegas. That'll be the next stop once we're done here in Detroit. You see Kyle Troop in action right now, holding on to that 15 spot. I think it's e comfortable to say the top 10 on the list right now, in good shape to move on. Brad Miller, the man just below the cut line. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kyle Troop joining you. I'm sorry, that's not Kyle Troop at all. It's the Hall of Famer, Chris Bars. What? I feel like I feel like this is a flashback to an, to an old yearbook picture. <laughs> yeah, maybe my old high school yearbook picture wasn't so far off. Just feeling the throw a little bit up here. I, a little redder night, and it's carrot top. Just Ooh, saying. Not bad. Yeah. But with with more muscles. What, what did you see? It's good. You're good. The rash oh, has developed you. already. Uh, what, what did you see there in our in our opening match? Well, I thought a lot of things uh, going on there, but I I do think that we may get a first time winner tonight. Why is that? Uh, I think we've had maybe the hottest player on tour that nobody's talking about in, in Chris Prather. Mm -hmm. The last six months, he's he's time after time been in the hunt. That first match where he gets to get out, make a few mistakes, not pay for them. I think that may be the key for him today. Interesting. I think he had one strike in that opening game, um, but I, I, I kind of... Opening seven frames, that was his first strike, was at frame number seven. Okay, uh, I, I like where you're going with that, though, because he has been really good quietly um he does have i think four third place finishes so yeah i mean he's poised to come away with being a first time winner chris what do you think's going to happen though with the oil pattern and how is it going to transition and who do you think it'll favor well your analysis was spot on i mean those guys are right on top of each other they're all breaking down the lanes together and generally that's going to favor the guy with the most power and the guy with the most power is bj moore that effortless power, if he can manage his emotions and he can manage that little bump to the right on his push away, he's going to be a really tough out. Up next, out. both these Hall of Famers are going to join us in the booth to call match number two. Troop looking for a better start than he witnessed in match number one. That's coming your way next live here on FS1. live at legendary Thunderbolt Lanes FS1 on point for the third straight night in prime time with PBA activity updated bracket Prather Troop match number two the winner to take on Bill O'Neill BJ Moore is your current number one seed third of five straight evenings of PBA action in prime time on FS1 coming your way from Thunder Bowl lanes here in Allen Park, Michigan. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Chris Barnes in the booth with you for this match. Prather will start us off, the native of Plainfield, Illinois, about 45 minutes southwest of Chicago, just south of Naperville. 27 years old, zero tour titles. <laughs> Late kick of the 10. Interesting little pin carry there, huh? 
Watch this. What do you think about this pin carry, Chris? <laughs> well, four I don't want to count I can on tell it. You that. <laughs> Somebody headbutted the 10 pin down there. They hear the energy in the crowd. Okay, right, this for you. Let's listen to our song. They want to see Kyle Troop. They came here tonight for Kyle Troop. He underdelivered in match one. A new chance here in match two, and he drops all ten in the pit. All right. I think he liked that one, Chris. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty pure off his hand right there. A little better start than last match. Chris, what do you think the difference is between the two lanes? BDS. It's been hard to tell so far. Both players have struggled just a little bit. Uh, I, I think the left lane's been a little more troublesome for some of the players right now. A little more early hook. Go! You like that ball reaction now? Well, that's a way better start than last game. He's not going to need that spare ball if he keeps throwing like that. <laughs> oh, Rob, take it a Take it a, a page right out of your book with the spare ball, but you're right. Throw it like that, you won't need a spare ball. Yeah, why drag around that extra weight if you don't <laughs> need it? Back-to-back <laughs> -back jacks for Troop. Here's Prather. More on him with Kimberly in just a second. Phase two, Arsenal. And he strikes as well. And Kimberly, uh, Prather was a busy man during match one. He sure was. I just spoke with Jim Callahan, Chris Prather's tour rep, and he told me that Chris went through six balls in his first match, which were all the balls that he used previously on this pattern the entire week. He also said that Chris still isn't confident with his look, so he's decided to loft it a little bit over the front part of the lane to try and delay some of the early hook in the front. Kimberly, she sounds like she could average 2-0. You think so? Yeah, she, she sure sounds. She's got the lingo down. Six, Looked a little yeah. slow. 17.5 miles per hour. And the ball track's really showing up. It looks like the left lane might be a little bit tighter than the right lane just because it, the line's inside fourth arrow on the right lane and it's right over fourth arrow on the left. Is that what you see, Chris? Yeah, I think you're right. And I didn't say it correctly earlier. It, it's playing overall tighter, but it's that's making the front part hook even more. This is a 30-year-old surface here. There is plenty of hook yeah. in the front of the lane. That's been the biggest difference from qualifying to these, to these matches on TV throughout the whole week. Mm -hmm. Marvel Pearl for... Kyle Troop, match one, four strikes in 11 shots. Oh, a little bit better look now. Look at that, one of those pins kicked out so far. It's going to be unable to be swept. And Troop, it's easy to love him, right? This is him pre-match. Some chicken fingers. We're picking out some wigs that he's going to hand out. He's got the attire. Where does he get it from? Look, it's part of his DNA. Oh, Kimberly made it. I didn't notice that. Kim looks good with oh that, by the way. God. But it, it comes from Pops, right, as it usually does. Guppy Troop, eight-time winner, had those electric pants that he used to wear. And yep. uh, what, what did they say? Uh, the acorn doesn't fall too far away from the tree there. Yeah. Ooh, locked and loaded. Well, Troop has dropped the first four strikes here in this match. Should he or any other bowler on tonight's show roll a perfect game? Everyone in America can receive a free game of bowling courtesy of Go Bowling. To claim your free game, simply head to GoBowling.com and register for the Go Bowling Free America promotion. And Barney, I'll ask you about Prather's game. You know, I talked about him a couple weeks ago when he made the telecast and what a beautiful game he has. Uh, bowled at Wichita State uh, a bit like yourself, but what is it in particular that you like about Chris Prather's game? Well, he's so solid. His repeatability has, uh, it just keeps getting better and better. Uh, you know, he was a really talented bowler, but he was kind of just a guy. And then all of a sudden he figured out a few tools and a few tricks that work out here. And he went from a, from
from a guy who is solid and potential to a guy that's in the hunt for the TV show really week in and week out. Yeah. And with all that ability, now he's got confidence. And that never hurts. Yeah. Now, speaking of guys that have picked up tools, though, the thing that's made Kyle so much better in the last couple of years, I heard you talking about it in match one, his versatility. He addressed the part he was weakest at, which was speed control. Yeah. He could only play right of third arrow, which mm -hmm. you would think with that rubber, it's not possible. Right. Now he's a threat from everywhere. Hey. Rob, you looked like you were going to say something a second ago. What's on your mind? It, it's when Prather comes up. I got something right. I want to tag okay. Barney's thoughts on that as we look at Kyle Troop's effort here. It was all strikes to open up the second match of the evening, leaves the 10 pin there. Now, obviously, the Afro gets a lot of attention. So do the outfits. He's got about eight, or eight to ten, he was telling us in his closet. Just got three new ones. I'm still convinced that he's wearing a onesie. <laughs> I'm convinced that's a jumpsuit. You, you can argue all you want. No, you did I think not. I think it's a onesie with pockets, and I want one, if not three. I'm a medium. All right? Are you, are you listening to me, High Five Gear? I want one. I want more. High Five Gear, the official jersey provider of the PBA. They got to start banging out more of these. They want to make some money. High Five Gear. Bang some of these oh Kyle Troop onesies out. And maybe make them nice and like, flannelly, warm and cuddly so you can wear them to bed. How about some that have like the attached feet? Are, are one just covered in afros? Right? Oh, it's got to have the attached feet. So Kyle Troop off to a strong start here in match number two. Our live coverage of the Scorpion Championship rolls on. I'm Kyle True. And you're watching the PBA on FS1. Pick it out, kid. Pick it out. Time for tonight's Columbia 300 fun fact, including this year's World Series of Bowling. The PBA Tour has visited Thunder Bowl lanes on 10 different occasions, and the venue has hosted 24 PBA Tour title events. Chris Barnes, have you ever won here? No. You're, sorry, sorry to bring that <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, man, you're a Hall of Fame. I just assumed you've won everywhere, bud. No, we bowled a few times in here. Uh, the arena the arena was my kryptonite back in the first World Series. Well, it didn't work for you 10 years ago, but I tell you what, I love coming to this place. This it, is such a the, the beautiful atmosphere, venue. It's fantastic here. I think the pros would want to be in this type of atmosphere every week if they had their brothers. Prather down 11 in the sixth. That gets them all to drop. Yeah, nice way to come back out of the commercial break. For Chris Prather, who's cut the deficit to one. We saw the commercial break bite a lot of people last night, guys. Yeah, that's a great point. That, that was the key shot in most of the matches yesterday was the first one out of the break was not a great one, or at least not a great result, and uh, had huge swings. But tonight, the right lane does seem to be considerably better. You can get it further right on that lane and still get it back. This is the tricky lane. The, whoever masters this lane tonight, Gonna have some success. Go! It did not go. Normally, it isn't go where you want it to push and go a little bit farther down the lane? You know, I talked about it the same way. Or you want it to hook. Maybe it's a Wichita State thing, because I think a lot of guys do talk about it going as far as accelerating. Right. I talk about wanting to hook. Okay. But my ball doesn't hook as much as these guys' ball does, so maybe that's it. They know they're just gonna. Two, four, eight, ten. Hit just about 9% of the time. Really tough to make tonight as tight as they are down there. Remember oh this gosh. one. Remember that pickup. What a great shot to keep him in the match. Oh, wow. Catch the two pin skinny. And that's how you make the 2 4 8 10. Chris Prather does it perfectly. Great sportsmanship there. Yeah. From Troop as well. Let's see how Troop responds. Increases lead to 15. Strike number six, two in a row. What do you see there, Chris? <laughs> Butter. That was so, so good. For the last shot, I thought it was a touch firmer and a little in from that. Yeah. That one was, he sweet rolled that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll go get him some coffee to go with it. Tomorrow night, 8 Eastern. It's the third major of the season live here on FS1. PBA World Championship. Belmo seeking that record 11th major title. Also that $1 million bonus lurking out there should anyone drop a 300 game in our title match. Man, how things can change with just one shot. Drop more glasses. That's fine. It looked like he kind of got around the side of that one a little bit more, Chris, which made it break loose right in front of the head pin. Yeah, it was a little in, and judging by his comment, somebody, something distracted him a touch, too. But sometimes if you're watching your other opponent, that's part of the problem. He saw Prather's ball not hook. He makes his hook a little bit from the wrong spot. Oh, man. That was really close. And all of a sudden, Prather takes the lead sitting on the bench as he gets up working on a spare in the eighth. Watch how close this is. Oh, I thought, I thought he made it. Yeah. If that was Jason Belmonte, he does hit it, right? <laughs> yeah, well, Eugene's well, of course. conversion he had last yeah. night on that 10 pin. Uh oh. All right. This is where you, get, this is where you step up. Big moments, big players, big time moment like this, Prather needs to step up and strike. Go! Oh. All right, now I'm confused. Yeah, maybe it's just a universal term. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Go to the pocket. Maybe, maybe if it's not going to get to the pocket perfectly, you just yell go, because this one goes high. All right. In any event, it's a trip four in a strike in the ace, setting up the ninth and tenth for Prather. He can strike out now for 254. Kyle Troop's max score, 242. If he strikes here, he can't be shut out. Seven ten. Are he you, left the seven ten. Are you kidding me? Chris, say something. Just like his Wichita State teammate last night in the ninth frame, A.J. Chapman. He throws one of his best shots of the match on that same lane for the exact same result. Yep. He caught a mix full of yep. that one. It almost looked like he moved farther left, threw it slower. Whoa. Went after the 10. Yeah, Game I effort. I think he gave himself a chance to create a little hold. He was going to make sure it got back. Yeah. Under the situ the circumstances, a fantastic shot for the worst possible result. Yeah. And a window of opportunity opens for Troop. Now, if Troop goes strike, spare, strike, he shoots 222. If Prather strikes out, he shoots 222. What a crazy opening match. Right through the face, big four. Minus the seven. Unbelievable. Wow. All right, so if we give him nine, it'll come down to who does what in the 10th frame. Well, this goes back a little bit to Prather, where he thought the last shot needed to hook, and it overhooked. So he might got yep. caught. Yep. This lane might just be breaking down. Yep. Wow, that's fast, right? Back-to-back -back open frames for Troop. Might be a good time for a re-rack. Both still, and yeah, he does. Troop does use one there. Can gather himself here a little bit. He's actually had pretty good ball reaction on this left lane comparatively. You know, if you go back to the eighth frame where Kyle left the 4-7-10, if he just covers the 4-7, he has the lead, but in that situation, I, I think you do what Kyle did and, and try to make it. Well, you, do, you didn't know. Yeah, exactly. You didn't know Prather was going to 7-10 on a strike in the ninth. Ooh. On. All right, well, if we give him the spare and he strikes on the fill shot, that'll give him 2-11. Prather would need to fill 20. Either spare strike or strike spare in the tenth frame for 212. What a great match. 
526 RPMs. You just don't see very many flat tens like that. Yeah, no. No, you only see flat tens when I throw a 16 pounder. I'm not judging. I just wanted to hear this song one more time. Troop out of re-racks. Can't take him home with you. No. There was quite a few on this left lane last night as well. Yeah. Important shot here. Well, that makes it a lot easier for Chris Prather. Yeah, didn't get us nowhere. 208 for Troop. Prather needs a mark and seven. If it's a spare, he needs seven. On his first shot, he'll shoot 209. As of late here, though, Randy, nothing has been a given. There's your mark. Uh, you can see from Specto there, he moved a little left. Yeah. Same move he made on the right lane, laid it down. Well, according to Kyle, every move is two boards. I did learn that last night, so I'm assuming. I didn't know that. <laughs> Commercial break, two boards. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, that's right, know. yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, that was a move that he probably made off of the trip for yeah. his last visit to the right lane, and then maybe watching what Kyle did. In any event, Prather is moving on, and he'll face Bill O'Neill. Chris, can you stick around for another game? Love to. Rob, can you stick around for another game? I actually had plans. But yeah, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Thank you. I'll do it. Thanks for the invite. I appreciate it. So Chris Prather moves on, dropping Kyle Troop up next. Your two seat, Bill O'Neill, who guns for his second tour title of the campaign. Match number three coming your way next. <laughs> Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Chris Barnes, Kimberly Pressler back here with you, continuing coverage of the World Series of Bowling here on FS1. Tonight's Ever Night flashback once again takes us back to the inaugural World Series of Bowling here at Thunder Bowl Lanes. It's the Scorpion Championship, Mike Devaney taking on Jason Belmonte, both seeking their second career title. They met in the title match. Belmo failed to convert multi pin spares in the eighth and the tenth. Left that door open for Devaney. Big Mike able to mark in his tent. Locked up the win, 189-170, his second career PBA title. Looks like he's either going to cry or throw up right now. Devaney got the win. I think it was tears of joy. Tears of, not tears of vomit, is that what you're telling <laughs> <Yes>. me? <laughs> Man, you and I were on the call for that one, buddy. Yes, we were. I just got a, a, a text earlier ask, uh, during the commercial break asking me where Chris Prather's cape was, insinuating he looks a lot like Clark Kent. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. Uh, that was a, an un-Superman-esque toss <sighs> right there, though. All right, Chris, out of the break. You do that, what, what, what's happened? Well, O'Neill got practice. He okay. had five to 10 minutes in between, or you had five minutes in between matches, and you obviously you have plenty of early friction here. You're just gonna have to move probably a, a three and two, four and four and two, and get away from that early friction in the front lane. You can see it going away. Would you have moved prior to that shot? And if given, so, what was the move? Given what I know now, yes, but I probably still wouldn't have moved enough. I'd have probably moved two there. Okay. Uh, two with your feet, one with your target? Yeah, half, okay. half with my eyes of what I move my feet pretty much every time. Okay. Depending on how much surface Bill is using, looks like it's matte anyway. It's not uh, It's not polished. So, yeah, I would guess probably at least two there, which would have been short. I think uh, the move's three to four there now. Billy O'Neill, first offering, leaves the 10. One of the things that surprises me about Bill O'Neill is his rev rate, in my opinion, 
based on his style, which I think is a little more old school, more like yourself, mm -hmm. a little more traditional. He's got a fairly high rev rate. I mean, he's almost at 440, 450. Yeah, I would say he's at 450. The guys, yeah. my contemporaries, Tommy's at 475. He's 450. I was 420, give yeah. or take. Yeah. Well, those, his and last shot was 439. Right. Yeah. All right, let's go down to Kimberly standing by with your fourth place finisher, Kyle Troop. Thanks, Ron. So, Kyle, you know, you had a rough start to your first match. You forgot your spare ball, but then you seemed to find your groove in the second match. You started off with four strikes, but then the eighth and the ninth came. You had two opens. What changed for you? Uh, I felt really com really confident. Uh, I made the ball change at the end of the first match. Uh, I knew my ball reaction was really good. Um, the only thing I could think of is I didn't move my feet left, you know, seven frames in into the match. I should have went ahead and moved a couple boards just because of the friction here. And uh, two, high, two high pocket splits. So uh, I wanted to move my feet more next time. Did any of that have to do with your hand? Uh, I, I can't blame any of it on my hand. I mean, it felt pretty good just running off of adrenaline and everything. So it's a good week. And uh, on to the Masters. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We hope to see the Afro in Vegas. Can you imagine the attention he's going to get in Vegas walking down the streets? Another 2 4 eight, 10. Who was it that showed us how to make this, Chris? Last game? Chris Prather. Yeah. Apparently, oh, Billy was watching. Oh, yeah, Billy. Yeah, the 2 4 8 10's like, it's like making a five pin tonight. He made it on that lane last night, too. Yeah. <laughs> He's walled up for the 2 4 8 Right? 10. Who knew? Is that even possible? Billy O remains clean. <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, yeah. Great reacts. Billy's a fairly reserved cat. Yes. He he lets he lets it go when when it's done when it's needed. Yeah, yep, absolutely. <laughs> like a ball change and another. The, Four, now seven. this one All right. is a, a little tricky because of count. Me. Chris Barnes. Okay. Yeah, but Let's this one then the six count that Billy get gave it, it affords him a little bit of uh, flexibility here to go ahead and try and make this. And even even if he doesn't, yeah. it, it's not a huge, huge penalty. Yeah, the problem with this, though, is if you miss the three oh, pin. That's zero. That's oh, the problem. Goodness. Oh, my goodness. That uh, was none off my hand. You lose all that count. Air mails it in the second. But like you said, Chris, the count's actually even now. Yeah, he's not on a strike. It's right. not a double up, so. We're watching Chris, one of the best things about him, watch his head. It just has, it, it's level all the way through. Yeah. His spine angle is level. And on his best shots, his head stays behind his knee. Every once in a while, he'll get a little bit out in front of it. Those cause him, that'll cause him a little bit of trouble like it does just about all the professionals. Great hand. He's the 10. He told us just hours ago that this year he's spending more time focusing <sighs> in on his mindset. That mindset is really being tested here in match three. Back to back open frames to start your semifinal match. Going against a vet, Bill O'Neill, who, if he smells blood, he's going after it. He's not going to back off. O'Neill, lots of experience in his corner. Not right. to mention talent. Back to the same ball he used in match one there. Right. On the left lane. Experiment. The experiment on the right lane didn't work. Quite a World Series of bowling so far for Bill O'Neill. Two top 10 finishes. Today, he can finish no worse than third, and he's in the World Championship show tomorrow night, live on FS1 at 8 Eastern. And then Friday, he's part of Team USA versus the World. Tremendous week for him. The only guy to make all the cuts. Yep. And there's really one shot away by from EJ Tackett away from not making any of these shows until the World Championship. Mm -hmm. O'Neill had bowled 79 games up to this point. More so than anybody else has bowled more, here more than World any Series. other player, right? So this is his 81st game of the World Series of Bowling 10. It's a grind. Uh, this is a marathon, and it's not just this week. It started last week with all the qualifying rounds. And really, it's been a month because we had two other majors in there, uh, longer formats, with which Bill made both of those finals as well. It's been, uh, 
he's been one of the most consistent performers week in, week out for almost two years now. Uh, although he hasn't made nearly as many shows as we'd like, week in, week out, he's a factor. Yep. Going with his Rodman Pearl as his arsenal. Come on, seven. Yeah. yeah. You know, he told us the key when we interviewed him earlier this afternoon. The key is ball speed. One of the things that he really worked on last season, which made him that perennial runner up, although he was so close to making a lot of shows last year, but it was all about ball speed and getting softer. And it was it, really his nemesis. He likes to throw. And since he's worked on that and been able to slow his ball speed down, he's a factor. And back in the winner's circle. Absolutely, his ball, that's the furthest right. I think anybody's got the ball in that left lane and not missed the pocket. Seven board to the right, down lane, I think is what the number was. Yeah, right lane we've seen that number, but not on the left lane. Great shot and adjustment there by Chris Prather. Moved back to that same ball he used in match one. Wasn't super comfortable with how that match ended, but the next choice up failed him early. Chance to get it back with him. Yeah. I, I like the, when I asked Chris what worked for him this week, and he said, throwing it slow and wrenching on it, <laughs> meaning getting it for all it's worth at the release point. Well, what we've seen on tour a lot this year is we've seen way more oil at the end of the pattern. I mean, it hasn't tapered as much with a lot of heavy oil on the front, tapering down to very little at the end. We've seen a more uniform front to back part. Lane's been a little easier left to right. Not so easy front to back. All right, here's Randy with tonight's track technique, focusing in on that man, Bill O'Neill. Yeah, just a beautiful game. And again, I love it because it's kind of old school. But watch the bowling ball fall to the inside part of his body. My old coach, Don Johnson, used to tell me this is V for victory. The leg angle and the arm to the inside part of the shoulder creates a great leverage position and allows Bill O'Neill to do what he does best, and that's get his hand underneath the bowling ball at the bottom of the swing. Talked about Bill earlier today about the World Series of Bowling. Been a long, grueling couple of weeks, but he mentioned he got off to such a fast start, making an early cut, made it easier for him to go on from there. Bowled intelligently the last couple weeks. Wow. But he had been trying to do too much. He mentioned it. too many ball changes. And he said, for this, I I'm going to find four to five good balls. I'm going to drill a couple of them. But I'm going to limit the experimentation tonight. Yeah, you're right, Rob. And I, I got a question for Chris about this left lane and the struggles that O'Neill's having. Uh, light in the second, two for a 10. Carries that light mixer in the fourth, goes light again. What's the adjustment for Bill coming out of break? He's really got to be slow with his speed. It's got to be able to pick up and find that spot. Cleans that one up. He's done with six. O'Neill and Prather in your semifinal. Billy O looking for title number two on the season. Can he close out Prather? Find out with us next live on FS1. Well, now you can outfit yourself like the pros, like Bill O'Neill with official PBA jerseys that are available exclusively at PBA.com. The jerseys made from high-performance fabric can be customized for each person or team. All you need to do is click on the menu tab over at PBA.com and their homepage. Select the Shop PBA link, and you, my friend, are started and get your own PBA jersey. Take a look at the scoreboard right now. Match number three, Chris Prather stepping up here to close out the sixth. He's down 18 pins to Bill O'Neill, the winner to take on B.J. Moore in our championship match here at the Scorpion Championship from Thunder Bowl Lanes in Allen Park, Michigan. Well, Barney, you were talking about Prather and how you, you saw this kind of reemergence of his game. And he said, really, it started last year because he said 2018 for me was make or break. He basically said to himself, look, if I don't make a show, if I don't show myself, I have a chance to win. And I'm going to continue bowling, but I'm going to pull back a bit. You're not going to see me every week. And that mindset has kind of tightened up his game. And since then, he's really been able to flourish. 
Yeah, for some people, putting your back up against the wall is absolutely the right play. Another thing, interesting, he said, I've grown to love the competition again. That one caught me off guard. Yeah! Got that lazy 10 to go late. And Prather takes the lead with that strike in the seventh. Gets himself a little ham bone to rally himself here in the semifinal. Just a little kiss. Yeah. That's a four bagger, Rob. I heard it. I'm, I'm not yelling it out of respect to somebody's wife on our crew, but let me tell you what, it's gonna end right now. O'Neal striking the seventh. Two pin game. Oh, this is a good one here in the semis. Yeah. Let's go 3D on Bill O'Neill. Uh, he's laying it down about the 34, 35 board, crossing at about fifth arrow on the left. And out to eight, nine board. So that's how much angle he's playing as you see his entry angle into the pocket. I bet your Prather's number, numbers aren't very far off of that. Come on. Oh, oh come on. Well, that's tough about what you were talking about, Randy. Oh, that puddle of oil, it seemed like it was in front of the head pin there, and you really have to throw it slow, and you really have to be good to it to get it up the lane there. Yeah. And he got all of that one. That was exactly what he was wanting to do, yeah. and then it rolled through it. Right. And that's the 98% on four pins. He can make this with his eyes closed. But, you know, that that's the point. It, it You know, light, light, light. The adjustment is to get a little softer. He executes. And he goes high. Now, the move is he probably had to move his feet and throw it slower. Not sure if he did or not. Yeah, it's hard to say. Kyle would have moved too. Right. And I know that now. <laughs> and I mean, easy from here, but again, well executed. He comes away with nine spare, trails by two. That time the push meant go a little bit farther down the lane before you start to hook, and he leaves a four pin as we take a look at this shot here. It looks like a handful. The good news is no nine pin standing with that. He knew it pretty early. He could see it pick yeah. up, and he was hoping they would lay off a little bit. He, like a lot of players, they've been using a little bit stronger drills with, with less cover for this side of the building. Spare there in the eighth. We go 3D on Prather. His launch position almost identical to Bill O'Neill's. Just maybe a board right of where O'Neill is, or pretty much right on top of one another in terms of how they're playing. So this oil pattern has broken down so consistently that the players are migrating perfectly and staying just inside the dry part of the lane, using the oil to get their balls to push to the right. Prather can max at 225. O'Neill can max at 224. Clark Kent steps up in the ninth. Hook, 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 hook. Another two, four, eight, ten. It's already been converted twice tonight. Too fast, Chris? I mean. I'm guessing he probably moved just a touch as well after the last one. I mean, it's just human nature. You see the ball hook a little bit too much. The next one you either move or you throw it a little firmer to make it not hook as much. And you just, it's, that's what's making this pair so hard is the amount of oil down lane at 45 feet. He's converted this once tonight already. In an open frame. Huge opening for O'Neal now as he takes a 15 pin lead, stepping up in the ninth. And he could put an end to Chris Prather's night. Max score for Bill O'Neill, 224. Max score for Chris Prather, 199. Three big, sorry, Rob. After you. Three big splits this game for Prather be his undoing. That's what a veteran does. 
That's what a 14-year pro on the tour does. What it matters in the foundation frame, and you got somebody down, you take that foot and you choke them out. I think it's really it interesting that twice in a row these guys have chosen to finish on this left lane. And it it's always easier from up here, but it obviously seems like the tougher lane. And, I mean, they had to see something they liked. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's Not maybe it reaches more hold. I don't know. I don't either. But, uh, it looks tricky. Oh goodness gracious! Yeah. Well, he's got to make it to shut out Prater. Wow. That was really good. Holy moly! That was really good. Oh jeez. Wrong spot. Too soft. It goes through the nose. You leave that. If you get too fast, it's well, it's the other way. So get the ball over here to the th side of the three six. Throw the three over into the seven. Sixteen percent of the time, this is converted. Sorry, forty-four percent of the time is converted. Prather got eight on his last step up, and now it's O'Neill with an eight, and he is done at one nine. I throw it hard to a ten. Prather needs a double. Well, the needs good news for Prather is it's on the right lane. Yeah, he needs he needs two. Come on. Last time up on the right lane, Prather went high and left a four pin. Three open frames here in the semis from Prather, yet he's in position to win it. Needs back to back jacks, though. Yeah! Halfway there. Good one there. He's going to take a re rack. Anything but. This same result. And it's O'Neill going through. And O'Neill will take on our number one seed. I don't know if you saw, I saw that ball pick up at 35 feet and it picked up and then pushed a little bit again and then picked up and went through him. Come on. If you see that move, are you moving? Uh, 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 no, I'm gonna, th I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay. I'm gonna do the same thing and hope. Just needs two pins. Well, he got a break, I think, Chris. Got a little bit wide and it got back for him. Yeah, I think he actually did everything he wanted. He, the adrenaline got him a yeah, little yeah, bit there. Exactly. But he, he got to finish on the good lane. And, and that's on the left lane. Yes! That's a 2 4 eight, ten. Yes! He leans on Chris Prather, the man that Chris Barnes felt had a great opportunity to win his first title tonight, is now one win away from doing just that as he takes care of your two seed, Bill O'Neill Prather moves on to take on B.J. Moore, Chris Barnes, the Hall of Famer. Always appreciate your time spending with us. Thanks for the intelligence boost for Randy and I. We always could use a little hit of it, and you certainly yes, provided sir. it. Chris, thanks so much. So our title match is set. B.J. Moore, Chris Prather, two youngsters on the tour looking for win number one. We welcome you back to outside Detroit. Get ready for more coverage of the PBA, but Sunday it's the Monster Energy Series. Here on FS1, NASCAR's finest battle around the paper clip in Martinsville. It all starts two Eastern, only on FS1 in the Fox Sports app. Take a look at your updated step ladder final. Chris Prather took care of Kyle Troop in the first match by 14, then was eight better than Bill O'Neill. So Prather in your title match up next against DJ Moore. Time now for another Go Bowling with Randy segment tonight. Randall, he's going to tell us about why the pros re-rack. Why do the pros re-rack? Well, I think three main reasons. One, the pin setter sets the pins down and the pocket just doesn't look right. So the players will take a re-rack then. Two, a lot of times players need to buy a little extra time. Maybe they get their emotions in check or maybe coming off of a bad shot they need to regroup. Three, my favorite, when a player ices his opponent. 
Norm Duke was one of the best at that over the years. But remember, during PBA competition and television finals, the players only get two re-racks per game, and they have to use them wisely. All right, Randy, thank you. Live look at B.J. Moore, ninth year on the tour, has never won. Will that change next? Your championship match, uninterrupted, coming your way next here on FS1. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling for promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you. Log on to GoBowling.com. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, welcome you back. We are just outside of Detroit in Allen Park, Michigan. Historic Thunder Bowl lanes with our continuing coverage of the PBA Scorpion Championship up now, uninterrupted your title match. And yes, the crowd looking for more, as in BJ Moore, the 30 year old, nine years on the circuit, has never won a title. The same for Chris Prather. He's been at it for five years. Somebody's walking out of here with their first tour title. Yes, sir. This is what they spend their time away from their family for, why they grew on the lanes, why they put their body and their brains through so much punishment to get that title. And, and here's something that is very interesting, and, and Chris Barnes touched on. on it. B.J. Moore is the higher seed. He gets choice of starting lane and finishing position. He chose to let Chris Prather start the match, which means Chris starts on the left lane and finishes on the right lane. And I think we've already established that the right lane was a little trickier. Excuse me, that the left lane was tricky. Right lane, everybody seems like they have a good look. So it's going to be interesting to see what type of reaction B.J. Moore has on the left lane. And, and in fact, Rob, a stat, Prather has struck 11 of 14 times on that right lane in two games. Or, excuse me, two games and then the qualifying game. Take a look here at B.J. Moore. This is one of the prettiest games ever. Look at that high backswing and the beauty of that position at the top of the swing. And then there's that bent elbow. That creates the power, but you know, he's very similar to Prather in that they're very steady going to the foul line. Biggest difference, higher swing for BJ, and he's got a higher rev rate. I like that from BJ right there. That was taking a moment to pull everything down, mm -hmm. calm things, quiet, inhale, exhale, breathe through the eyelids, whatever you need to do. Breathe through the eyelids what everybody tells me to do. I've got to try that. My eyelids are very congested as of late. 0 and 1 in TV title matches. <laughs> First one was wow. on the Scorpion as well. And let's not forget in 2016, he finished second on this very Scorpion pattern in Reno, Nevada. No secret that BJ Moore likes this Scorpion oil pattern, or anthropod, depending on. Scorpion. Okay. We're going to go with Scorpion. Slow. Oh, Prather has had sketchy starts to his matches tonight. He's finished wonderfully in the 10th, but another dicey start. And, and again, uh, wondering why BJ would make him finish on the left. Uh, um, well, now maybe this is why he's making him finish on the right lane. Prather had to adjust his approach, and he's actually standing in front of the ball return now. One of a handful of players that doesn't go to a spare ball. I think we saw AJ Chapman last night. Doing that, Norm Duke uses a flat hand release to throw it end over end. 
Kyle, make his Kyle spares. Troop also on occasion will throw his strike ball in a spare situation. <laughs> not, not again. Too soon? <laughs> Too much. That went left sooner than he thought. This pattern is blowing up right in front of the players, Rob. <laughs> Randy, that image says the story. Look how deep he is now. Remember, it was just a game ago where uh, we were talking about uh, where the laydown was and what target they were rolling over, and the players are moving just about every other shot now. Yeah, he might start this shot over in lane 10. Prather goes down, B.J. Moore pops up. Felt slow, they look slow. Moore grew up in North Carolina, outside of Raleigh in the town of Apex. Recently moved to Greensburg, Pennsylvania, just east of Pittsburgh. He's been there the last couple years. He and his wife took over a family restaurant. Falbo's Restaurant Lounge in Latrobe. Probably celebrating with a couple of rolling rocks to see their we got DJ Moore dropping all 10 pins there, Randy. Absolutely. Well, remember, we looked at the soil pattern not too long ago, and uh, the players were playing kind of around this area here. Well, that's changed because now they're into this fifth arrow. And uh, they're pretty deep. And they're going to continue to chase it left. Remember, with every ball that goes down the lane, these reactive resin bowling balls absorb oil. So with every shot, the playing field changes as we take a look at B.J. Moore's arsenal, High Road X. There's that same 2 4 eight, 10 zone. The only thing missing, the four pin. And this was the big question mark as to why finish on this lane when that was so prevalent over the last couple of games. That light hit. 0.6% of the time this is converted. Takes care of the two and the eight. Ten left standing. Open frame more in our championship match. You get the sense he knows what he did wrong. Full scoreboard, Prather up four, as he begins his effort here in the fourth. Last two shots for Prather, both went high. Let's see what type of adjustment he makes. There really is only one left, and maybe loft. There's the loft. Yes, yes sir. Sure. Yes, he's got enough juice in the tank. When he has stuff like that happening, I've been there before. It's it's a sign. It's it's your it's your night. There's the loft to delay hook. Remember the ball can't hook if it's in the air, right, Rob? If you tell me so. And then the messenger, the slow rolling messenger from deep inside, and just enough to knock the ten over. I love a good messenger. So does Prather. Double for Chris. And that's how you take advantage of a nice break and an opening by your opponent. So now it's Moore's turn. After that open frame in the fourth, his deficit now at 14. And those last two shots definitely made the temperature in the building go up just a little bit for B.J. Moore. Shot yeah. from DJ Moore. He's got, he's got the whole crew in attendance tonight. Tania, his wife here, son Lincoln, daughter Brayley. They all made the trip in here. There they are before the show. DJ said, you know, so important for me to have the kids here. I want those pictures of me on the lanes with the kids so they can remember uh, this is what daddy used to do when you were there. Uh, although he and Tania, a little, little leery to bring the youngsters out lane side. Uh, particularly the young, the young rascal son. <laughs> Afraid he's going to have a little too much energy and running around. So 
They're kind of hiding in the back right now, watching Dad, cheering them on. Three six. Left lane blues. It's been like that the entire evening. Remember the last shot went light? Human instinct, human nature is to make sure the next shot curves or hooks. And that one certainly did, right through the face. Left lane blues. Left lane blues. Sounds like a jazz album you're going to release later this summer. So Moore cleans up the left lane blues. And he's going to walk over and get some yeah. advice. Right. Yeah. He'll go over and have a chat with Tim Mack. That's Tim Mack recovering from yeah, knee surgery. Knee, knee replacement surgery. It's good to see him back out. Jim Callahan to his right. Back to Prather here in the sixth. Lead at 14. Prather looking for three in a row. What is that? Oh my. What kind of hit is that? That is incredible. I've seen it before, but not so much from th this angle. This is crazy. Watch this as a pocket 410. Unbelievable. That is just incredible. I'm not sure Literally I've no ever seen that on TV. What is that? What kind of hit is that? Unreal. <laughs> what is that? No. <laughs> it stopped me mid conversation, so. <laughs> I'll tell you what that is that's life on the PBA tour. It is brutal out here, folks, and they can humble the best of you. Uh, this whole telecast has been back and forth. Uh, uh, you know, the match with Kyle Troop, and then our last match. Separated by just eight pins, right. Prather and O'Neill. And then Prather O'Neill. I mean, everything's been so back and forth. And again, I've seen stuff that, man, I haven't seen before in a long time. There it is, that left lane. He goes light, singular, lose, not which again brings me back to why did B.J. Moore choose to finish on that lane? Yeah, ridiculous. So easy when you're sitting in mm -hmm. this seat. Not so much when you're sitting in theirs. It's, it's even easier in my seat. Dead eyes that one. Stand for trailer. B.J. Moore leads by two sticks. What is even what even is that? Uh, I know. Those, 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 Well, B.J. Moore has been doing some talking with his ball reps as well, Kimberly. Yeah, we just saw B.J. talking to his tour rep, Tim Max, so I asked him um, what they spoke about, and Tim said he gave him advice and told him to move left on the left lane and round off his shot and get a little bit more push in the middle so the ball doesn't hook so early. Yeah, but the last time he did that uh, was in the fourth frame where he left the 2-8-10. There's Timmy Mack. Well, the best amateur players ever. So he moved farther left with his feet, made sure he got it to the right with slow enough speed, and the ball goes sideways like somebody kicked it left. That left lane has turned into a absolute dumpster fire. Crazy. And again, Moore is going to conclude this match on that left lane. Yeah. He has one more shot on the right, and then he finishes on the left. Right. This was outside of your hand. I want you to draw that line like we always talk about. Okay. And just roll it down the line. Do you know what to see? Now you just have to commit to it. 
Right. Same ball reps for both of our finalists. Yeah. Interesting. I know, right? Like, wait a minute, hey, are you telling me the right <laughs> stuff? Do you like him better than me? Right. Prather in the eighth, down two. There you go, Chris. Come on. Looking like, for tour title right number one. You know, and I think Chris has an advantage because he's got games under his belt. He knows exactly what the lanes are giving him. Right here. This is his fourth game of the evening. As your three C took care of Troop 222, 208 in match two, then was eight better than Bill O'Neill in match three, and right here, here he is in your title match taking on BJ Moore. Right here. Went light last time on this lane. Big shot here. Yeah! Wow. Some good pin carry there for a change. After that pocket four and ten that he certainly didn't deserve. B.J. Moore now down by eight. But no matter what B.J. Moore does, he cannot shut out Chris Prather. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler back here with you. You are watching the Scorpion Championship match live on FS1. Bottom of the ninth, B.J. Moore, your one seed, taking on Chris Prather. One of these will win their first ever tour title. And Moore just left the 10 pin there in the ninth. Oh, he's running out of time. And now he has to try to rely on striking out on the left lane to force Chris Prather to get the first strike in the 10th. And the left lane has put some kind of voodoo curse on the guys tonight. Third spare conversion here in the championship match for Moore. 30-year-old lives in Greensburg, PA, just east of Pittsburgh. We begin the 10th. Nine pins separating these two men from their first ever PBA Tour title. Max score 204 for B.J. Moore. If he strikes out, he forces Chris Prather to get the first strike in the 10th frame. And he is on that loopy left lane that has just destroyed people tonight. He struck once on it, and that was in the second frame. There it is. Come on. Overhook, overhook. Merry Christmas. Looked like he moved in a little bit farther left and got after it, and that extra speed made it push even longer down the lane. And that was Prather realizing he has really close to winning it, but some pressure put on there. Moore converts the 210. Ah, splendid split conversion there. Well, this keeps him in the <laughs> it in the keeps hunt. him in the hunt and forces Chris Prather to mark. Yeah, not so fast, my friend. We need good count here, and Prather will have to avoid some crazy pocket split on the right lane. Can get one for the road? Take your victory lap, my man. Come on. Mark to win for Prather. I mean, if he goes nine dash, nine miss, we have a tie. His first tour title. Oh my. That was pretty close to being a 4 9. Nice. It's okay. It's just a four pin. All Chris Prather has to do is cover this four pin, and he will win title number one. It's converted 98% of the time on the tour. Earlier tonight, you said these guys could do it with their eyes closed. Prather's going to go with it, eyes wide open. Yes! 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 You are looking at a man who has finally won on the PBA Tour.
Dude. I'm proud of you, bro. Hey, good work, man. That was awesome. He bowled great, Rob. Made all the right moves. Sorry. Made the right decisions, and, and then he executed. Oh, thank you so much. Come get it, kid. Come get it. You're going to see BJ Moore tomorrow thank night. Thank you, Roto-Grip. Thank you, Storm. Thank you, Vice. But tonight, do it without you. it's all about Chris Prather. Oh. For the win. Morgan. Kimberly with our winner. So, Chris, you fought hard to get here. You won three matches. Um, but how surprised were you that BJ decided to end on that left lane, which has pretty, been pretty tricky all night? Uh, yeah, it actually surprised me a lot. I was really anticipating finishing the match first on the tougher lane. And, you know, it went in my advantage that he let me finish the match last. And just, I don't even know what to say. I was just... Well, you came here. This is your fifth year as a pro. You came to the World Series, and today you walked away a PBA title champion. Put in a word what that means to you. I honestly can't. Uh, there's actually a lot of stuff that uh, I have to do now because I'm a PBA champion because a lot of the tournaments I bowl, I'm not allowed to bowl with my friends now. So <laughs> it's more work, honestly. Uh, but I'm going to go home, celebrate, and, uh, you know. <laughs> It's more work, but it's absolutely worth it. Congratulations on winning tonight. Oh, the smile says it all. Congratulations, Chris. Tour title number one for Prather. Here's the yes! winning moment. Yes! 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 Well, we're back here tomorrow night live, 8 Eastern. It's the PBA World Championship, third major of the season. Jason Belmonte looking for that 11th major title. That would be a new PBA record. Also, a 300 game in our championship match. One million dollar bonus. Did you say one million dollars? One million dollar bonus. Inside PBC Boxing is coming up next. But the night belongs to that man. Chris Prather, the Clark Kent lookalike, puts in a Superman-type performance as he wins tour title number one. We'll see you again tomorrow night right here on FS1, 8 Eastern with the third major of the PBA campaign.